Hey there, good morning. It's Councillor Glenn, and this is my update for Saturday, April the 13th. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Before I get started, I wanted to mention something. Um, we have video captions on this video if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, so if you ever have any difficulty hearing what I'm saying, you can turn those on. I won't try to explain how, but somewhere on your screen, there should be a setting uh, to activate subtitles. Uh, now they're automatically generated, so they're not 100% perfect, but they are pretty good. So a great tool if, uh, if you need that to help, uh, help improve your viewing experience here. Uh, but anyway, thank you to everybody who tunes in each and every week. Okay, lots of updates. I wanted to start with something uh, my team and I are very excited about. We have launched our community micro grant program. I'll explain what this is. So um, during the pandemic, a number of longstanding events, uh, annual events just stopped happening. Um, a couple of community associations folded and um, uh, we also have so many new people coming into the community. And uh, we're, we're looking for ways to encourage people to get some activities and projects started again. And so uh, we've started this community micro grant program and we are gonna be awarding grants of up to $200 to qualifying events and activities, uh, organizations and, and groups that wanna to put together something that brings people together here in Stittsville. So if that sounds like something of interest to you, maybe you've got an idea for something that uh, has been percolating at the back of your head for a while, check out my website and you'll find all the information. There's an application form and uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can encourage the start of some more uh, activities here in our community. Uh, talking about bringing people together, a reminder that registration for cleaning the Capitol is ongoing. You can go to ottawa.ca slash clean. And a big thank you to all the people who've already participated. I know we had some schools in the last couple of weeks and some individuals and groups who've done cleanups. And uh, it's a little bit wet and rainy today, so maybe some of the events planned for today will be postponed. But uh, lots of cleanups happening, and uh, please do sign up. Uh, you have until think mid-May in order to sign up and complete your cleanup of a local park or green space. The nominations for volunteer awards continues. Um, I think the deadline is April 26, so there's still lots of time to nominate a great volunteer in your community for our annual awards ceremony. You can go to glengower.ca slash volunteers for more information. And uh, we've also opened up um, the registration or, or um, expressions of interest to participate in our Welcome to Stittsville Multicultural Festival coming up in June. Uh, so if you'd like a, a table, uh, if you'd like to do a performance, if you'd like to sponsor, if you'd like to be a vendor, uh, we, we have limited space, but uh, uh, please come and, uh, and register and let us know that you're interested in participating. We'd love to see some great representation from countries around the world. Um, and the people who live here in our community. So you can go again to glengower.ca and you'll see a link to information there. Okay, let's look back on the week that was. Uh, Monday started with the eclipse. Uh, I know a lot of you were out there watching it. And um, if you have glasses that you're looking to recycle, the uh, eclipse glasses, the library on Stittsville Main Street has uh, a location where you can drop those off for them to be reused. They're gonna send them to a nonprofit organization. And I heard St. Andrew's Church on Stittsville, Maine is also collecting used glasses. Uh, on Tuesday, we had our development information meeting for 1174 Carp Road. This is where there's a, um, a draft proposal to do a retirement home with uh, just over 400 units, I believe, and uh, up to 12 story buildings. So thank you to everyone who participated in that. Uh, you can watch a video from that meeting on my website or on YouTube. And we've also shared the applicant's presentation deck, quite a detailed um, documents. So if you live nearby, or you're interested in this development, please check that out. On Wednesday, uh, the Stittsville Kiwanis Youth Center uh, hosted an open house and I hear it, uh, we had a great, uh, a lot of people turned out there, which is great. Um, the Youth Center is at Frederick Banting School on Stittsville Main Street and they're open uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, late afternoon, early evening. It's open to anybody uh, from grade 7 to grade 12. It's absolutely free, no registration. There are video games, ping pong table, uh, uh, foosball table. There's a quiet area for, uh, for study. Um, so lots of things uh, for kids. Uh, there's some volunteers there supervising, lightly supervising, but really it's a place for youth in our community to hang out. Uh, so check that out. And uh, if you know a young person in your life who might be interested, uh, please let them know as well. 
So Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Thursday, we had our Transit Commission meeting. Um, now, I just got off the phone with uh, Andrew Pinson on CFRA, and we were talking about some of the updates we received. Um, there, there's some, some positive signals. We get reports and data every month. The on-time performance of buses over the past six months, really over the past year, has continued to get better. Um, this is uh, on-time performance means the bus has arrived in a, a very small window, no more than a minute before the scheduled time and no more than five minutes after the scheduled time. So that's considered on time. We're at 79% now and the target's 85%. So we're getting there. Um, it's never going to be 100% because buses are in mixed traffic. So if there's bad weather or there's a collision uh, or something like that, uh, buses get affected by that. But the target is 85%, and that's kind of an industry standard. Once you're at that level, um, it's very good, and uh, and you you avoid the you know any kind of regular um, delays or anyways, really improves the reliability. So we're getting there, and the reason we are is because OC Transpo has been enacting a plan to address the issues that cause late buses in the first place. Things like a driver shortage. So they've been doing a really aggressive recruitment campaign for new drivers. Uh, we've had uh, an issue with bus maintenance. Part of that is availability of mechanics and there's some other process issues as well. So they're attacking that maintenance issues. So that's making uh, buses more reliable and making sure that there are drivers and staff available to drive them. And the third piece of that, that major plan around performance and reliability is the launch of the new bus network that'll be coming up likely this summer uh, once the new train line launches. So um, that'll be another really important initiative to improve the reliability of our bus network, which is super important. So things are getting better, that's good. Still room where we need to improve. Uh, I'm looking forward tomorrow to checking out the, uh, well, I'm gonna be participating in OC Transpo's TransSecure and Safe Driving Awards. So the TransSecure, it's a ceremony where we recognize drivers who've gone above and beyond to ensure the safety and security of, of residents in the community. And the Safe Driving Award recognizes drivers who've had a streak of um, no accidents, like like days, uh, not days, years and years without an accident. So uh, it's always a great event. I'm looking forward to that tomorrow morning. All right, uh, some, some reminders here to close off. Uh, stay off the field. Sports fields, ball diamonds are not ready yet, especially with the snow and rain last weekend and the additional rain this weekend. We're getting close, but please do not go on the fields, even to run around with your, your pet, and certainly don't be playing uh, group sports out there. Um, just so the uh, fields don't get damaged and we can open them as early as possible for sports. Um, Lee Boltwood Park, which is at Abbott and Malahat, the Stittsville Goulburn Historical Society have kind of adopted that uh, the garden there in the park and they're looking for volunteers from the community who can help out with some maintenance this year. Uh, so if you'd like to help and you live nearby, uh, contact me or contact the Stittsville Goulburn Horticultural Society and we'd be very happy to put you in touch. Uh, not too far from there, um, over on Bald Cypress, there's a pedestrian bridge that's going to be opening soon. And uh, on the other side of that, so I guess it's in the, um, the uh, Bradley Commons neighborhood, uh, there's going to be some tree removal early next week. And that's part of the construction of the multi-use pathway that needs to be constructed so that we can open that pedestrian bridge between the new neighborhoods. That's uh, Richcraft who's doing that construction on the bridge. Um, they were telling me this week that the bridge could be open um, by the end of June if everything goes well and the weather cooperates, which would be a nice link uh, between the Abbotsville Crossing community to Bradley Commons and uh, Hazel Dean Road. Actually, it'd be a great link for pedestrians and cyclists uh, to have to, you could avoid Iber Road to get to Hazel Dean. Good stuff. Um, next week, April 20th, there is a repair cafe at City Hall where if you have an old electronic device, a uh, toaster, a kettle, um, I don't know, an alarm clock that doesn't work. There'll be some uh, handy people there to help you get those repaired so you don't have to put them in the garbage, which is pretty cool. And uh, I want to remind you about the Waste Explorer, which is a tool on the City of Ottawa's website where if you've got something that doesn't normally go into the garbage, like hazardous waste or you know an unusual bulky material or maybe some old electronics, you can go to the Waste Explorer at ottawa.ca and uh, plug in what that item is and you'll see locations in the city where you can take that for recycling, a really good tool. 
Uh, lots of events coming up in the next few weeks too. I won't go over all of them, but you can visit glengower.ca slash events for more information. Uh, okay, two more things. They have to do with our multicultural community here in Stittsville. Uh, Eid Mubarak. It was the end of Ramadan earlier this week, and I'm sure people are still celebrating Eid. Uh, great, uh, great celebration here in the community. And uh, I wanted to wish uh, people in our Sikh community a happy Vaisakhi and a happy Sikh Heritage Month. That happens all through month, throughout the month of April. And um, I think I'll wrap it up there because I've got a kind of a scratchy throat. So thank you for watching. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Saturday. Take care.